It's Calvin Castine. It's February 9th, 2002. And we are at the North Bowl Lanes, just outside of beautiful downtown Plattsburgh for Section 7 Bowling. This is James Tierney and Lane 23. And he's going to pick up eight pins in his first ball. He gets a split. I'm not going to pay much attention to the teams that the Cougars are bowling against. In this case, it's Alcebo Valley, but uh, that doesn't really mean anything. They, uh, they just draw the teams out of a hat. And uh, that's how they get their lanes. Tierney opens it up with a open, or an open. Every team in Section 7 is here. A's and B's and the boys and all the girls teams. Alan Mavor gets seven pins in his first ball. What happens here is it's all scratch. Also today, bowling for VHS. The Bowling handicaps Happy are not birthday. part of uh, the calculations during the season. They are during the season that the handicaps are included in the scoring, but today it's all scratch. So the team that bowls the best today, a total of six games, will end up. And Mabor leaves a pin, I believe. I think it's nine. Tina bowls the best scratch series, six games. They'll bowl three in the morning, three in the afternoon. And uh, there's Jonathan Gadway. The team that bowls the best will go to the States. It represents Section 7. In addition, they'll also send all-star teams from the players that are left over that uh, aren't on the championship team. The top averages will go to the States. I believe there are six that will go. Adam Chucker Chapola leaves his nemesis to 10 pin. We got a, oh, he leaves a split, actually. They want to show that hair. He's got. Uh, he's a redhead today. Not sure what the red hair is all about, but uh, maybe tried to make it maroon, and that's the color it came out. A little different here, taping than with, at the Beaumont, where we're used to taping. The lighting is a much different uh, factor. In the Beaumont, the players are visible. We can we can see them, but here the. There's not much light above them, actually. You see the nearest light is several feet away from them. And then the light is in front of them, so. And as far as uh, me taking pictures, it's behind them. Roberts gets a split. He says, what do we have to do here? Nothing but splits coming up for the Googers. Tierney, James Tierney gets a late drop. And he gets a strike. Now Nate Roberts. He gets nine for the frame. Uh, Cougar coach Chris Welch. Um, Sure, under a little duress today, we saw in the paper today that his uh, his grandmother died. So we're under a little duress today at uh, at this match. Alan Mavor with the with the strike for the Cougars. Now Jonathan Gadway, who's working on the strike, steps up. Al Sable, I think, is the team that finished first during the regular season. Memory serves me. They finish first and the Cougars in second place. They, uh, we, 
We'll uh, show you some of the graphics here at the North Bowl. After this, uh, I'll save a bowler bowls here. We'll, we'll show you the board up above. If you got a strike, you got a strike. So we'll see. Huh? Nothing to indicate it. It's, uh, usually there's some kind of graphic up there. Still waiting for Gadway. Gadway leaves the 10 pin. There's, there's an example, it shows the 10 pin and it shows you how to take the, the spare. Over here, the Alsable Bowler has the 8 pin, and those are pretty obvious. It's when you get a, a split, and we've had several opportunities to show those, and we should have, that they will show you how to pick up the split, theoretically, of course. There's Gadway going for his spare. He's going to miss it. That'll bring up Chipola for the Cougars. Bola gets the strike. There's an example of uh, what the scoring table shows. Again, an easy split to pick, an uh, easy pin to pick up, just a 10 pin. There's Roberts in the second frame, his first ball. Wiggles the 10, but it stays. Is it? And Roberts misses the spare. Cougars are off to a horrendous start here. That's uh, two opens for Roberts. We'll try to get the averages from Coach Welch. We have Tierney starting his third frame now. Come on, and he leaves three pins, including the double wood. It up. Tierney picks up the spare. Now bring up Alan Mavor. strike. Seven pins. He's got the three, six, ten to pick up. Should come in a little bit to the right of the three, and he hits it head on. Want to come in to a little bit to the right to 
carry on into the sixth and into the ten. Now Gadway. And Gadway leaves double wood. Got to come in and hit that one pin head on, really, not, not at that angle that they're showing there. Actually, he could pick it up with that angle, but uh, he's going to have some power behind the ball, so he'll follow through, pick up the back pin. And he does. He's got it. Now Chipola is working on a strike. And he picks up another strike, he doubles. You might expect it is crowded in here. We We'd have a better view if we'd move a little bit to our right, but we'll be blocking out people. And there's no good angle to tape from here. Nate Roberts picks up his first uh, mark for the strike. Here's Tierney in the fourth frame. Tierney strikes. Alan Mavor. Mm, Mavor gets eight on his first ball. Leaves the one two. To give you a comparison, 263 to 208. Now here's Gadway. Gadway leaves double wood. Pick it up. Next up is Chipola. And Chipola strikes. That gives him a turkey, a triple. Roberts working on the strike. And Roberts doubles. Looking to come on strong after that double open. Again, just the Cougars are not bowling against the uh, I'll say well, they're bowling against everybody that's here, but I'll just give you a stable score, 336 to Clippers 276. Only the top team will go to the States. Tierney gets nine. Not happy with it, but he'll settle for it. 
opening was uh, working on a strike. Everybody for the Cougars marked in the fourth frame. Tierney just barely gets it. It's a late break on that curveball. Must have been a split fingered fastball that time. It curved at the last moment. Now here's Alan Mavor who's working on a spare. And Mavor gets seven pins. Uh, he's got a tough spare to pick up here. Obviously the 10 pin is gonna be the tough one. It's two of them. <laughs> now Gadway steps in. And Gadway picks off seven pins. Got a one, two, four. The other scores we see, let's see over here, 438. Let's go back to Gadway. He will pick it up. Let's see some other scores here. The Sentinels 438 with the third and sixth frame. Just going into the sixth with a 434, the Plattsburgh Hornets. The Cougars here. Midway through the fifth with a 329. Chipola leaves a split. Leaves a split. And uh, computer has no advice to offer. Computer says you're on your own when you pick up a split. Go for the two on the left, and he'll pick off one of them. He was hoping to slice that pin that he missed into the 10 pin, but that didn't happen. The score here, again, just for comparison, show you how bad the Cougars are doing 440 to 351. Here's Roberts, who was working on a double. Chipola, of course, was working on a triple. Roberts leaves the split very similar. Oh, he's got more pins up there than I thought. How he got that seven pin, uh, I do not know, but somehow something snuck in there and knocked down the seven pin. In the meantime, Tierney steps up and strikes for the Cougars. Roberts had that double going, now picks up another open. It's only seven for the frame. Now here's Mavor. He strikes. Strike for Alan Mavor. The Cougars have an even 400. Two bowlers into the sixth frame. Here's Gadway. And Gadway strikes. And I'll bring up Chipola, who had an open following his triple. the wall bowlers here at the North Bowl. And Chipola strikes. 32 lanes here at the North Bowl. There's 16 at the Bowmark. Here's Roberts. Gets the strike. 
Defunct Plattsburgh Lanes had uh, 32 lanes also. Plattsburgh Lanes, of course, is now the the uh, Chipola's up. No, it's not Chipola. It's uh, another big fella. It's all sable bowler. Uh, been distracted. I uh, asking Coach Welch for the averages when he gets a chance. The uh, Plattsburgh Lanes, of course, is now the Lake City Skate. It went from a bowling alley to a, a hockey rink. Or a skating rink, and not just hockey there. Now we're waiting for Tierney here. We'll take a look and see how the Dragoon boys from uh, PHS are doing. Mark has a 121. And Dan a 127 with a a mark. We'll try to sneak over to those lanes and catch them when they're, when they're bowling. There's Tierney. Tierney gets nine in his first ball in the seventh frame. on the strike, and he'll pick up his spare. I'll bring up Mavor, or the Cougars. And we got the uh, Cougar averages here that we'll share with you in a moment. As uh, Mark Dragoon, uh, we didn't bring him any luck. He picks up a split over there. He gets a split to, to pick up. There's Maybar. He gets nine in his first frame. And Dragoon will get nine for his frame. That was Mark. Now we have Dan. There's uh, Maybar picking up his spare. Gets nine in his first ball. Here's Gadway. And Gadway's going to leave the 10 pin. He's trying to wish it down, but that didn't happen. There's Dragoon going for his spare. Should pick it up easily, and he does. Badway waiting for the pin setter. Give us a moment to read the averages for Northeastern. Adam Chipola with a 198 average. Nate Roberts with a 195. James Tierney, 193. Alan Mavor, 188. And Jonathan Gadway, 179. Now the B team for the Cougars. We may be able to pick up the B team. I'm not sure if we'll be able to cover them at all today. Uh, we've got the Joe Hack with a 166. Andy Barcombe, 177. Kelly Poisson, 156. Bryce Gadway, 155. There's Jonathan Gadway missing his bear after that long wait. There's Chipola. Chipola. 
He's got a tough one. But the computer knows how to do it. Meantime, uh, this is, we just got a strike from uh, Mark Dragoon. Chipola picks up the spare. All we saw was his shoulder, but uh, the pins went down. Dan Dragoon gets eight pins and his first ball in the frame. Here's Roberts. And Roberts strikes. Now here's Tierney starting the eighth frame for the Cougars. Tierney strikes. Dragoon picks up his spare. Gadway. Looks like Bill LeBeau bowing as he goes by. There's Chipola. And Chipola strikes. Up Nate Roberts. And Roberts avoids the split. He's a 6'10, but he almost had a 6'7'10. For a spare, and he will pick it up. The security man didn't finish those averages. Uh, Jarrett Borey had a 148 for the, for the Cougars. Complete the averages. Here's uh, Dragoon. And he gets nine in his first ball. He's, uh, he is in the 10th frame. There's Dragoon looking to get a fill ball. He does. Sable's bowling over here, so we'll keep our eye on uh, Mark Dragoon. Going for his fill ball in the tenth. He gets the strike. I'll give him a 150, is it? A 170. 170. Now uh, Dan Dragoon is up. As we are waiting, Tierney just put his first ball in the lane here in the, in the 10th frame here at the front of us. There's Tierney and he strikes. There's Dan Dragoon. And he gets eight. That's 
check over here. We are in the ninth frame, not the tenth. 656 for the Cougars, 685 for Al Sable. The Cougars have closed it up as far as Al Sable goes, but let's just check out some nearby bowlers. The Ticonderoga Sentinels have an 852. Of course, they're in the tenth. 865 for Plattsburgh. Here's Mabor. Leaves the 10 pin. Looks like Dragoon, Dan Dragoon finished up. The, ended up with an open in the 10th frame. So he had a pretty good game going, but he ends up with a 191 with that open. Tough break for him. Here's Mabor. He's going to miss his spare here in the ninth. The girls averages for the Cougars, Cassie Roberts, so 186. Kristen Bashard, 163. Megan Sorrell, 147. Laura Lee Parra, 144. And Katie Rabideau, 133. Here's uh, Jonathan Gadway. He gets eight pins in his first ball here in the ninth frame. He leaves the 5-9. Gadway, 179 average. Two pins better than Andy Barcom on the B team with a 177. There's Gadway going to pick up his pair. Now bring up Chipola. Five pins. A one, two, four, six. Oh, well, we'll get uh, two of them. Tried to kiss off that one. And he missed it. They get seven for the frame. Now Roberts. Uh, Roberts left to seven pin. Seven twenty-four. Tierney bowling here in the tenth frame starts it off with a strike. Seven twenty-four to uh, seven twenty-six. So the Cougars have actually caught up with Al Sable, but again, they're not bowling against Al Sable. They're bowling against everybody that's here. Roberts gets a spare. Only the top team will go to the states. And the Cougars uh, I would guess as a team carry the best average in the CVAC. So as scratch bowlers they would have to be favored. However, however, this uh, alley as Tierney gets nine is the home A home court, so to speak, for several of the teams in the CBAC. There just aren't enough lanes at the Bullmart to host something like this. Tierney picks up the spare. So you've got, I know, Saranac, Town, Peru, Plattsburgh. At least those four teams.
Mabor gets seven in his first ball in the tenth. So those teams bowl all their home matches here, plus a percentage of their away matches are also bowled here because they're bowling against a team that has this uh, site as their home site. So in other words, when PHS, oh, Mayborg gets only eight for the frame. When PHS is playing Peru here, Tierney finishes with a nice 207, Mayborg with a 137. When Peru is bowling PHS here, obviously, the, even though it's an away game for one of them, it's an away game at their home, regular home site. Well, Gadway starts off with a, with a strike here in the tenth. Tierney with a 207, that's nine pins over his... Actually, that's uh, 14 pins over his 193 average. Mavor with a 137, that's uh, 51 pins under his 188 average. Gadway gets a split. Gadway carries a 179 average. He will be under his average in this game. In the adjacent planes, uh, Ty and PHS have started their second to second set. Gadway will finish with a 169, 10 pins under his average. Now Chipolo's bowling 155. Bowls his first ball in the tenth. And leaves another split. He was working on an open. Well, most he can pick up is 20 pins here. But he might uh, end up with just nine. As he gets that split. He get tough, tough to try to pick that up. So that's going to be a disappointing start for Chipola also. 164. He carries a 198 average. That's 34 pins under his average. Now Roberts with a 195 average will come up. And Roberts leaves a 10 pin. He's got a disappointing 153, so he can add another 20 to that. Well, he would only be able to get a 173, and that's going to be at least 22 pins under his average. Dragon strikes over on the other alley. Roberts will miss his spare. Miss his spare, so he finishes with a 162. Cruz with a disappointing 839, but it's better than our Sable. But uh, they're not bowling against our Sable. We'll watch uh, Dan Dragoon going for his spare. And then we're going to head over to the girls and see how the Cougar girls are doing. Next up, the Cougar Girls. All right, we are midst the balloons here. Here's Cassie Roberts. She spares, I think we're in the first frame. Oh, that's not gonna help us too much. Yeah, we're in the first frame. Looks like uh, Peru, I believe. Uh, Peru is the team that's bowling with the Cougars here. There's Rabidou. Katie Rabidou gets nine pins in her first ball. Now 
Not sure how they did. Maybe you can check with uh, you can check with John Roberts, uh, who's behind me, to see how they see how they did. There's Rabidou. She's gonna miss her spare. Actually, I guess we're in the second frame here. There's Laura Lee Para. She strikes. They're in the second frame. We we're on our way over here. We have an intention of getting here in a timely manner, but did a little chatting on the way over. Now Sorrell will come up, Megan Sorrell. Tough conditions here with the balloons everywhere. Sorrell has seven in her first ball. Terrell, nice spare. Oh, Kristen Bayshard. Well, let's see. Uh, Bayshard. She's got nine for the frame, I guess. And an open in the first frame. Oh, she's got a split. They're beating down uh, teams that brought their cheerleaders with them. No way we can uh, cover what Beekman Town is doing because somebody decided to bring balloons and it's Beekman Town colors, so we'll blame the Beekman Town fans for blocking out the Beekman Town bowlers. They should. So I got nine for the frame. Well, at this point, Cougars of 104 is to compare through 112. So another bowler to go. Now Roberts for the Cougars. Robert's working on a spare. And Cassie Roberts picks up the strike. Now Rabidou. The girls averages as Laura Lee Para steps up. And Para leaves the 10 pin. The Cougar girls averages Cassie Roberts, the high bowler with a 186. Kristen Bayshard, 163. Megan Sorrell, 147. Laura Lee Para, 144. 
Katie Rabideau, 133. Well, the Cougars, uh, Roberts, I would say, is definitely going to the States. If the Cougar team doesn't make it, she will certainly be an all-star. Uh, uh, Sorrell, Sorrell strikes. We'll bring up Bayshard. And base hard strikes. Now Cassie Roberts. Roberts gets eight on her first ball. Always seems to be having a good time no matter what the score is. It seems to keep things in perspective. Enjoys bowling and uh, is able to smile, a legitimate smile, even when the, the pins don't fall for her. But with a 186 average, they fall for her quite often. Roberts and she's going to spare. Come on, Gary. Katie Rabideau. Action in back for Rabideau. She gets a. Uh, well, it's her spare. She picked off three pins. Seven pins. Here's Sorrell. Bring up Bayshard. Bayshard strikes. You got a double. Oh, 
Roberts. She gets a late drop, she gets a strike. I'll bring up Rabideau. Well, Roberts is marked in every frame thus far. Uh, Rabideau gets six pins on her first ball. We'll see how she should pick that spare up. There you go. Went to the left of the one pin. On the left side of the one pin. Gets nine for the frame. That brings up Para. Bayshard shooting for a split, and she's going to get one of them. Now uh, Roberts will start things in the fourth. Or the fifth. Roberts had a 214 in her first game. She's marked every time so far here in the the fifth frame Marked every time so far in game two yeah. and Roberts will pick up her spare Rabido gets five on her first ball. for the frame, we got Para. And Para gets a strike. So Turkey, three in a row. Now Sorrell will come up for the Cougars. Pick it up. Oh, 
Monroe gets seven pins in her first ball. Fair. Now bring up Bayshard for the Cougars. There's seven on her first ball. A one, three, eight. Take it up, Gail. And oh, misses the back pin. The eight pin stays. 429 team score for Clippers. 418 to Peru. Uh, as we mentioned in the boys bowling, they're not bowling against uh, Peru. Each team is bowling to win it all. Only one team will advance. We hope to find out uh, before too long here who the All-Stars will be for the Cougars should the Cougars fail to advance to the state championship. Cassie Roberts. Oh, that won't get a smile. She's done nothing but mark so far. We're going to probably have her first open here. She gets a split to start things in the seventh frame. Try to get the 10. Give a good shot. Give it a good shot. So that'll be her first open. And it gives her a 126 through seven. So she's still working on a strong possibility of a 200 game. Obviously, if you don't have any opens, you, you're guaranteed a 200. If you throw in a couple strikes in the meantime, if you get all spares, uh, you probably can't quite get it depending on what your uh, First balls are. Rabideau picks off eight. The rabbit is going to miss her spare. Does she have a double wood there? Does she have seven for that frame? Yes, seven. She actually had three pins standing. Now Para is working on that triple. And Para gets a four bagger. A four bagger. I'll bring up Sorrell. And Sorrell gets a strike. Sorrell has a nice game going. I'll bring up Kristen Bayshard. And Bayshard strikes. Oh, last 
three bowlers for the Cougars in the seventh, all strike. Tessie Roberts gets nine on her first ball, looking to start another string of marks. She and Stansberry seem to be enjoying themselves here on this uh, Saturday morning. And Roberts will strike. Avenue gets nine in her first ball. We are in the eighth frame. There's Avenue's second ball and She's going to pick up the spare. Awesome. Now Para steps up for the Cougars. And Laurelie Para will leave the 6'10. Score at this point, just to compare Peru and Northeastern, 534, 540. Here's Para's ball, and she's going to pick it up. Now Sorrell up for the Cougars. Sorrell working on a strike. Para, of course, has been working on four strikes. And Sorrell gets nine in her first ball. Para right now through seven has 145 off to a very good game. There's Sorrell, who's not for a spare, bring up Bayshard. Bayshard. There's a baby split. You can pick this one up. With all the confidence in the world here in Bayshard picking up this bear. Oh. Came in with a hook. Now Roberts. Roberts strikes. Get anybody. Uh, Rabidou up for the Cougars. Uh, Rabidou gets eight pins. He's a six ten. Uh, 
Roberts with a nice uh, 146. At the moment, it's a 156. Abadu going for her spare. She's going to miss it, go to the left of it. We haven't decided yet what we're going to do for the third frame. We're going to, well, I don't know, we might not even stay for the third frame. We have uh, basketball starting at noon at uh, Northeastern as Para strikes. So Para continues to have a good good game here. So 165 for the strike. Working on a strike in the ninth frame. Here's Sorrell. And Sorrell strikes. It's a double, I believe. Maybe not. No, she had a spare between this, her last strike. Now here's Bayshard. Bayshard gets nine in her first ball in the ninth. Six seventy four to six nineteen. Dennis is all scratched. Section 7 champion will be crowned today in the boys and the girls. Bayshard will pick up her spare. Yes. All right, Roberts will start the 10th frame. Cassie Roberts. Leaves a nine, a seven pin. That's nine on the first ball. Let's see if she's still got a shot at a 200 game here. I don't think so. She's gonna be a little shy of a 200. Two opens that did her in. Up to spare, so we'll get a fill ball. So she can get a 186, which is right on her average. Roberts carries a 186 average. Rabideau a 133. Roberts will get a 183. Well, Rabideau with just 85 here. And so would like to get a spare so she can get a least into the into the hundreds. She'll be quite a bit below her average, but I'm sure she wants to get a spare here. And at least get into the hundreds. Shooting with an 85 through the ninth. And she's gonna leave the 4-7. It's certainly a doable spare for Rabideau. She just picks this up, they'll give her 95 plus her fill ball. She needs to pick this up. And she's going to yank it into the gutter. She's had that problem today. We've seen uh, several balls uh, just coming off her hand and, and not staying on track. So it gives her a 193, 40 pins below her average. A Laura Lee Para. And Para gets seven on her first ball. 
He's a two, four, five. And Para cannot hit 200 either. She can, uh, she'll be somewhere around Robert's total. But first she needs to pick up this pair. And she'll do it. Orly Para gets up the spare. Because they're 185 plus her fill ball right here, so she should be in the 190s when all is said and done, and she's going to get eight of them, give her a 193. Excuse me, gives her a 203. 203. So Para gets a, a 200 game here in the sectionals. Sorrell. Is calling it a split because the head pin's not standing. Sorrell can nope, he's gonna come to the left. She'll get only eight for the frame. Gives her a 163. Now I'll bring up the uh, base yard. Sorrell carries a 147 average. Bayshard strikes. Para carries a 144 average. And Bayshard is up now, carries a 163 average, second highest bowler for the Cougars. Just to compare, 716 for Peru, 783 for the Cougars. But I doubt if the Cougars are on pace to. Uh, Go to the states. We need to have everybody bowling above their average. Again, there's no handicap here. It's all scratch bowling. Sorrell's got a 151, I believe. Let's see. Like that, the base yard. Base yard. As soon as this silliness is over, we'll tell you what the 151. So there's your totals for the Cougars in the second game of the match here at uh, the North Bowl. Section 7 playoffs. We're going to spend a few minutes here just to get these guys in the B team on tape here at the sectionals. But uh, we're going to have to head out to Northeastern uh, about 40 minutes. The basketball will start. We're not going to be able to cover all this today anyway because they are bowling a total of six games. The Bowlers on the B team for the Cougars include Joe Hack, Andrew Barcombe, Kelly Poisson, Bryce Gadway, and Jarrett Borey. As we mentioned earlier, it's wall to wall bowlers here. Bowlers everywhere, all 32 lanes filled. Not sure what they'd do if they had an extra team in the CVAC. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Or 
they're checking the scoreboard. Joe Hack just struck. Well, we stood over here so we could see. Now we can't see anymore. Here's Gadway. We get seven pins. Just gonna get a few frames. And we'll hope to have the totals when it's all said and done. And we're gonna move over a bit, I guess. Well, let's, let's see what Gadway did. That way, we've got nine for the frame. Here's Bory. And he gets six in his first ball. That's the spare he's got to pick up. Three, five, six, ten. Just one. It's seven for the frame. So there's coffee for everyone. There's Poisson. And Poisson gets eight for the frame. We had a better view before, as far as seeing the alley, but the, uh, one of the parents from the adjacent team were uh, standing up. Also gets uh, the spare. I'll bring up Barcombe. Again, the averages for the B team for the Cougars. Joe Hack a 166, Andrew Barcombe a 177. And Barcombe strikes. I'll bring up Hack. Kelly Poisson 156, Bryce Gadway 155, Jarrett Bory 148. Hack gets a strike. And we have a happy hat. <laughs> now Gadway. Yeah. Gadway gets six in his first ball. Gadway will pick up his spare. Nice spare by Gadway. Now, uh, Bory is up. Bory working on an open. And he gets nine pins. Reminder that uh, Hometown Cable is viewer supported television. And if you're not supporting Hometown Cable, then you certainly should be. Bari's going to put it in the gutter. Only way we can uh, 
pizza and a soda for $4. And Karen's have a bite to eat. They see Bev at the snack bar and get a ticket. There's Puss on. We're listening to the uh, specials here, the dining specials. Puss on gets seven. Well, it smells good here. They obviously have a, a good variety on their menu. Puss on going for his spare ball now. As I was saying, viewer supported television. Without the viewers' support, we wouldn't be here. So, if you're watching, we could certainly use your help to keep this program coming. The only income we get. You don't go to a restaurant and leave without paying. Park home. It's nine pins. Bears. Well, we're at a point here, we're going to watch these guys go through one more time, then we're going to head out. We're going to be late as it is for the basketball game. Here's Hack. Hack gets nine in his first ball. Gonna miss his pair. Turn up Gadway. And Gadway. It's seven. Leaves a one, two, four. And he'll pick it up. Now get us to Bori. song for the Cougars. And Poisson gets seven. The double wood there, you got the two eight along with the, the head pin. Yes, he got it. 
I would think having the head pin there is actually makes that double wood easier to pick up, get more possibilities. Once that head pin deadens at uh, the ball, it uh, gives you a lot more possibilities as to what can happen. Now here's Barcombe. He's got just a double wood. No, he doesn't. He's just a two pin. He's not have double wood. He's just a two pin to pick up. Barcombe picks up his spare. And that's it. That's going to end our coverage. We hope to have some uh, totals for you coming right up. In the meantime, I'm on my way to Northeastern to cover the end of the basketball season at Northeastern Clinton. There'll be four more, three and a half more games bowled here at the North Bowl in the meantime. So stay tuned. We hope to have the, the results for you right at the end of this tape.